hey, Dr. Lee. I need to collect my wits and figure out what to do next. Oh, Excuse okay. Me. Listen, thanks for getting us through that. I'm not stupid. I know we wouldn't have made it without you. I'm sorry about your dad, and I'm sorry I've acted like an ass. Oh, well, you know, since you apologize, we're cool. Great. If there's anything I can do for you, let me know. Yeah, sure. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Bye. Hey, hey, buddy. Hi. Yeah, so listen, thanks and all. Really great job you did there. Thanks. Bye. Oh, hi. Hmm? Oh, yes, hello. I've heard about you. We don't get many strangers here in the Citadel, especially those who walk about unescorted. I am Scribe Bowditch. If you require something, simply ask. So what do you scribes do? Why, a great many things. There are three orders within the scribes, you see, each dedicated to a different field of study. Uh, I forget. Could you name the orders for me again? Of course. There's the Order of the Sword, Order of the Shield, and Order of the Quill. The Order of the Sword develops and maintains the Brotherhood's weapons. The Order of the Shield does the same for our power armor and defenses. The Order of the Quill is responsible for recovering and preserving knowledge, ancient and otherwise. I appreciate that knowledge is seen as just as important as defense. That's something I think the outcasts would not understand. Which order are you in? I am Proctor of the Order of the Shield. I oversee the others in my order and make sure our defenses are up to snuff. Do you know how long it took to fortify these ruins? From the husk of the Pentagon, I carved a grand citadel. No easy task, my friend. Ah, but that was yesterday, when all we had to worry about was those damn super mutants. The Enclave, now, that's a different problem altogether. I see everyone's really worried, and they're definitely right to be. Very well. Could you tell me more about the outcasts? It's a rather sad story, I'm afraid. Last year, some of our soldiers had grave disagreements with the decisions of Elder Lyons. Disagreements spiraled out of control and there was a schism in the ranks. The loyal soldiers practically threw out the dissenters. Now they call themselves the outcasts. What sort of disagreements did they have? Where Elder Lyons has fought to protect the people of the Capital Wasteland, the outcasts demanded we move on and leave them to their fates. They insisted there was more important technology to be recovered and a scientific base in the ruins of Fort Independence to the west. As callous as their decision may be, it's more in line with our original mission. Elder Lyons is an inspiration to us, but to them, he's a traitor. Who were the exiles? The soldiers rallied behind Paladin Kasdan, who was one of Elder Lyons' original squad. They served together for over twenty years. Kasdan was well respected, and every bit as loyal to the Brotherhood as Elder Lyons. He just disagreed with the interpretations of our oaths. But when disagreements turned into fistfights, he left with the outcasts. We lost more allies that day than we ever have to any battle. It sounds like it was quite a loss. Do you think there's any way to get through to them? Lyons and Kasdan would have to agree to any sort of reconciliation, and that's pretty unlikely. They're both quite proud and stubborn. Me, I just wish there was a way we could all agree that at least we're still on the same side. There are bigger problems out there, after all. Well, I've met Kasdan. And when we resume contact with the Western Elders, Lyons is going to be put in his place. Even if that place is in front of a firing squad. And honestly, you're being way too charitable. It's nice that you let them all go, but do you think if it was the other way around that they would have let you go? No, they would have executed you all for treason. Are you doing anything about it? As much as some of our soldiers would like to see them shot for deserting, there's not much we can do. We're too busy with the super mutants. Meanwhile, they're busy seeking out new technology and trying to get back in contact with the Brotherhood out west. So our paths rarely cross, but it's never pretty when they do. I just hope things cool down before it gets worse. I mean, there's more options than just letting them be or execution. But whatever. It is a rather discouraging subject, isn't it?
Could you tell me more about the Brotherhood of Steel? Oh, yes, I can. In fact, I suspect I could write several texts on the various details of the Brotherhood. But I suspect you're in a hurry. So what particulars would you like to know? So what are the central beliefs of the Brotherhood? I'm afraid the answer to that is a lot more nuanced than others might suggest. Brotherhood members are sworn to acquire and protect technology of the past, but not everyone interprets these oaths in the same way. Elder Lyons sees these duties as part of a larger dedication to protect the innocent. Some, like the outcasts, disagree with these priorities. So what have been the highlights of your time with the Brotherhood? I like to think that I've still got some big achievements left in me, although some of my joints seem to disagree these days. I'll tell you what the lowlights of my time have been, though. Every time I've been shot at. I'm a scribe, not a soldier. So what's the biggest challenge the Brotherhood has ever faced? It seems like whichever challenge we're facing is always the biggest one. Survival at first, then expansion, and now cohesion. We've seen plenty of wasteland freaks or would-be dictators. They're not too bad. At least we've faced that sort of thing before. But more recent events, like the schism with the outcasts, those are the problems that worry me. Aren't the elders at worst dictators and at best aristocracy? I don't know. Elder Lyon seems to be reforming things around here. It'd be cool if he did something about that. Okay. Anything else? Any thoughts on the Enclave? They're sporting some pretty impressive power armor, I'll give them that. The Advanced Mark II. But that's alright. With a few modifications, our own armor will more than handle anything they throw at it. Care to share anything about the Super Mutants? They're relentless, like nothing I've ever seen before. I honestly think they see our brothers in power armor as some kind of... canned meal. Some of the pieces we've had brought back. Men and women ripped in half. Some pulled through their armor. Just horrible. Ugh, gross. Is there any way you could repair my equipment? I suppose that I can. The Brotherhood can make use of wasteland currency to trade. Then why do you only take Brotherhood scrip? Alright, bye. Farewell. Hello? Hail to you. By the traction of hospitality and on the word of Elder Lions, I welcome you to the Citadel. I am Star Paladin Cross, Keeper of the Arm, and Seneschal to Elder Lions. And, I am honored to say, I was acquainted with your father. Now what may I do to help you? You knew my father? I did, and you as well. Long ago, I helped guard the water purifier against the super mutant horde. When your father left, I escorted the two of you to Megaton. He was... a nobleman. I was saddened to hear of his passing. But from what I've heard, he died with honor. He died for you. I only pray that my own death has such meaning. Why does it matter how he died? I think it's more important how he lived. Death is death. True. And in the end, death claims us all. But how we die can say just as much about our lives as how we lived. Your father died for what he knew to be right, and he died protecting those closest to him. This is a good man's death. But I must ask you a difficult question if I have your leave to do so. Uh, you mean another one? All right, sure. I escorted your father across the wastes. It was the best I could contribute to his efforts to restore fresh water to the people. I would like the honor of escorting you in your journey to complete his work. What about the Enclave? As a Star Paladin, I answer only to Elder Lyons. He has given me leave to pursue the restoration of Project Purity, as I see fit. By aiding you in your travels, I shall fulfill that mission as best I am capable. Alright, that sounds great. I would be honored, Star Paladin Cross. Then I shall follow your leave and submit to your command. As James's child, I know I don't need to explain, but I am not your servant. If I do not like the path your actions take, I will return here. Now, let us go forward. Crush the Enclave and fulfill your father's mission. 
You are a credit to your father. Well, I mean, if you like lions and you like James, I guess you're probably a good person. There is a foul stench on the wind. Let us not tarry for long. I'm curious if you and Elder Lions approve of the work I'm doing. We're both extremely proud of you. I don't mean Project Purity. My other work, Lollipops. Mm, you're off in your own little world. Water's important, I get that, but so is sex positivity, and I'm really helping with that. All right, all right. No need to get your underpants in a knot. Sorry, and let me start over. I uh, notice you have some cyborg implants. I kind of have an eye for these things. Can I ask you something about them? Yes. What about them? So how much of you is organic versus not? Do they interfere with personal stuff? Don't worry about them. If it's not too forward for me to ask, are any of your implants sexual in nature? Yes, they are, dear. Quite. You know, posing for my magazine would be a big favor to me and to the wasteland. Okay, consider it done. Anything else? Oh, just like that? All right. Um, I'll gather some others and we can go to Canterbury Commons. Roger that. What? I forgot that I still have these posters. Let's see if I can put some up here. The Brotherhood of Steel's fanatical dedication makes it unlikely that knights or scribes would leave to work at Lollipops, but an initiate who washes out of basic training might be interested. It's worth putting one in the mess hall. But I want to head over to the B-Ring and put a couple in the barracks, too. For signs of trouble. Alright, that should be good. Alright, let's keep looking around. With your presence here. Thanks. Oh, hi, Elder Lions. Hail to you, daughter of James. I'd like to ask if I could have permission to trade with the quartermaster. This is not normally something that we do. Trade with outsiders has proven to be problematic in the past. However, considering the circumstances, so be it. I'll send word to Durga that you have full access to trade. Oh, thanks so much. Bye. Hail. Oh, hi. Hey. Yes? You don't say much, do you? No, I don't. What do you want? That symbol on your armor. You're part of Sarah Line's squad, right? What can you tell me about it? Sarah appreciates my methods. I fill a role no one else can. Well, what is that role? Spec Ops. Let's leave it at that. Okay, then. Any thoughts on the Enclave? They're men. They're born, they live, they die. End of story. Care to share anything about the super mutants? Shoot them, they die. Stab them, they die. Strangle them, they die. Okay then, goodbye. Hoo-ah, soldier. Stay safe, once again. Ugh. Who are you? Hail to you, stranger. I am Knight Captain Dusk, in service of steel. If you require anything, simply ask. Could I ask about you? My story? I blow the head off anything more than 200 meters downrange. I'm the best shot in the Brotherhood of Steel, bar none. Not even Colvin can match my kill count. That's my story. That's impressive. Competition must be stiff around here. Damn right it is. Last time I checked, it wasn't called the Sisterhood of Steel. Hell, even Sarah has to prove herself to the knuckle-draggers. Every once in a while, we have to show them what's what. Oh, so you're saying the Brotherhood has some sexism. Yeah, I can see that. So, what do you do around here? I'm a sniper with the Pride. 
put any mutie bastard within one mile of me and my rifle, and, well, pack it up, troops. Fight's over. Colvin thinks he's a better shot. Man's delusional. I think he probably is delusional. So what can you tell me about the Lion's Pride? We're the most elite tactical unit ever assembled in the Brotherhood of Steel. Here or anywhere else. Hell, ain't nothing Sarah's Cubs can't handle. Okay. What do you think about Gallows? I don't trust him. I know, I know. I should take faith in my brother. But he disappears for days out into the wastes. He comes back without a word. He only reports to Sentinel Lions. And he doesn't tell the rest of us what he's up to. I can't trust a soldier like that. The other guys, they think it's a joke. Glade's even got a betting pool going to find out Gallo's real name. A betting pool, honestly. Well, I can understand why that would make you distrustful of him, but he has a right to privacy. So, any thoughts on the Enclave? Honestly, I can't wait to see if one of those helmets can stop a hollow point round at 100 yards. I'm thinking, not Hollow point? Uh, yeah, yeah, they will. Maybe armor piercing could get through. Anyway, care to share anything about the super mutants? I can tell you that those heavily armored ones, the masters, they favor heavy weapons, mini guns, and missile launchers. My recommendation? Headshot from a distance. Avoid the meat grinder. Eh, good advice. You know, creating order out of chaos is, well, a tall order. Yeah, that isn't very funny. But seriously, how do you find time to just be a woman? Are you trying to piss me off? No, I value my life, but I bet you could use some time away. I'm listening. There's nothing sexier than a strong woman. You should post for my magazine. You're a cocky little thing, aren't you? I like that. Great. Next time you're off duty, drop by the studio. Roger that. Hmm, let me see if I can put some posters up in here. The Brotherhood of Steel's fanatical dedication makes it unlikely that knights or scribes would leave to work at Lollipops, but an initiate who washes out of basic training might be interested. The A ring doesn't seem like the best place, but it might be worth putting some in the B ring barracks in the mess hall in the lab sector. Ah, okay, I guess I'll put some over in the B ring. Those Enclave troops are a joke. Huh. Yeah, I guess I hadn't thought of it like that. The Brotherhood is at your service. Hello. What aid can I offer you, outsider? Just wanted to say hello. Well, we both seem busy, actually, so... Steel be with you. Let's hook up later and go... Yes? I ran some scans on... Hail. Welcome, brother. Maxon Family Dossiers. Roger, Maxon. Born in A, died 2135, second in command of the security team stationed at the West Tech Research Facility, later relocated to the Mariposa military base. Assumed command after nervous breakdown of security team leader Colonel Robert Spindle, executed scientists after learning of their research into the Forced Evolutionary Virus, or FEV. Deserted from military just before the war, Maxon ordered the families of all base personnel brought inside the facility, thereby sparing their lives led survivors in their exodus to the Lost Hills Bunker. Maxon's wife was killed on the journey. At Lost Hills, Roger Maxon formed the Brotherhood of Steel. As the organization's first High Elder, he formed the Orders of the Paladins, Knights, and Scribes. Oh, so that was the founder of the Brotherhood of Steel. Maxon II. Born in a teenager of unspecified age in 2077. Died 2155 took over command of the Brotherhood of Steel as High Elder in 2135, when his father, Roger Maxon, died of cancer. In 2155, while hunting down a group of raiders known as the Vipers, Maxon, who was unhelmeted at the time, was grazed in the head by an arrow. A deadly viper poison killed him within hours. Wow, I had no idea that the Vipers killed a Brotherhood High Elder. John Maxon Born 2097, died in A. Son of Maxon II and grandson of Roger Maxon. A gifted soldier, John Maxon was promoted to the rank of Paladin at age 38, in the year 2135. Soon after, he was promoted once more to head Paladin. 
In 2155, Maxon was promoted to the illustrious position of High Elder when his father, Maxon II, was killed in glorious battle with the raiders known as Vipers. Records indicate John Maxon had some dealings with a mysterious figure identified only as the Vault Dweller in the year 2162, at the age of 65. Oh, so that person that I was cloned from, the Vault Dweller, the person they were looking for, interacted with the Brotherhood of Steel all the way back then? Juan Maxon Elsdragon must have been from the same hereditary line. He took my family, he took my boss, my money, my home. Do you know what that does to a man? It makes him grow up mean. The High Elders of the Brotherhood are definitely akin to a monarchy. New Entry, Scribe Arthur Maxon. Born 2267, died. Only son of Jonathan and Jessica, both deceased. Last of the Maxon bloodline. As an infant sent to the Citadel to be fostered by Elder Owen Lyons, the reason for this decision was twofold. One, recent internal conflict amongst the Western Brotherhood of Steel created an unsafe environment for the child. It was believed that the Citadel, despite being located in hostile territory, would increase his probability of survival. Two, Elder Lyons, at that time, was in high favor with the Western Elders, and deemed a perfect candidate to provide care and training to the Squire. Recent events have led to a lack of communication with the Western Elders. As a result, Squire Maxon will remain at the Citadel indefinitely. Oh no. I think that's who I need to kill. He needs to never take power or he will have an army behind him. He creates the East Coast chapter of the Brotherhood. We have to send it now. Prevent this terrible future. Save humanity. Kill Squire Arthur Maxon. That future time capsule said he became a fascist elder. I have to stop him. Let let me just talk to the kid first. State of Maxon The State of Maxon in the New California Republic was built in close proximity to the Lost Hills Bunker and enjoyed the protection of the Brotherhood of Steel. No additional information is available at this time. Oh, wow. So the NCR must have been encroaching on Brotherhood territory. But they were allies at one point, likely during the uh, NCR Enclave War. That's why the NCR has a state named Maxon. Diary of Roger Maxon, Volume 1, October 10th, 2077. I, Roger Maxon, Captain Serial Number 072389, have started this log because it doesn't look good for any of us. And I'd like for people to know what really happened here. All hell broke loose when we finally discovered what those scientist busters were up to. The colonel has locked himself in his office and seems to be having some sort of breakdown. The men are screaming for blood. They're looking for me. To, they're looking to me for answers, and I'm not sure what to do. Someone has to do something, though, before this place sinks into an anarchistic bloodbath. That's not how anarchism works. October 12th, 2077. Every time we get a report from higher up, things get worse here. The war is going in a very bad direction, and this place is about to go into full mutiny, with all the chaos that entails. I stopped one of the men from executing a scientist today, and demanded that we interrogate them to find out what their orders were. October 13th, 2077. I killed a man today. I was interrogating Chief Scientist Anderson, and he was giving me the full details of their inhumane experiments. He said his orders came from the government, but I didn't buy it. He started screaming about how he was following orders, how he was a military man, and I just shot him. I tell myself it was to keep him from causing a full mutiny among the men, but I'm not so sure. Well, he kind of was giving you the Nuremberg defense. October 15th, 2077. I tried again to speak to the colonel through the door, but he seems to have completely lost touch with reality. I broke down the door with several of the men just in time to watch him blow his head off. Right before he pulled the trigger, he said he was sorry. Ugh, that's awful. October 18th, 2077. By killing the egghead, I seem to have confirmed my position as leader of the men. They follow me without question now. The interrogations invariably end up being executions. Shellman held out the longest, but the end result was the same. Her arguments about her orders were a bit too specific to be completely made up. 
I'm getting a real bad feeling in my gut about how this is all going to end up. I don't even lie to myself anymore about my reasons for executing the scientists. I mean, I guess I understand if they did such horrible, inhumane things, but still. October 20th, 2077. I finally replied to the outside world over our radio. I don't know why they never sent anyone here to see what was happening when we stopped responding to their transmissions. It doesn't make any sense. Well, they'll come now. I declared ourselves seceded from the Union. They remember Jefferson Davis. What will history say about me? Well, first of all, you weren't seceding specifically to preserve slavery, so hopefully they would see you in a better light than him. Second of all, you kind of ended up creating a monarchy, so... So that didn't work out well. <sighs> Wait a sec. Seceding? Ignore Maxon's little rebellion. Idiot actually seceded from the Union. Ha! None of it's going to matter in a few hours. Richardson. Seceding. I remember President Richardson talking about this. Diary of Roger Maxson, Volume 2, October 22nd, 2077. What the hell is going on? We declare ourselves to be in full desertion from the army and no longer under the government's command, and what happens? Nothing. Something bad is coming down. October 23rd, 2077. I can't believe those b****s finally did it. Don't them all to hell. They finally let the A-bombs fly. We were right in the middle of trying to pry the real story of Von Felden when we completely lost contact. I have a feeling the research center was hit hard. I don't know why, just call it a gut feeling. It seems inconceivable that we were not targeted. I'm sure China will make up for that oversight real soon. Luckily, we had moved our families from outside into the facility the day before yesterday. We do not yet know if the fallout has reached this area. October 25th, 2077. Sergeant Plattner volunteered to go outside today to take specific readings on the atmosphere. It seems the radiation has not spread this far. Since he was wearing his power armor, there was no threat to him from radiation, but if he had been exposed, he would have had to be exiled. We don't have adequate decontamination facilities here. October 26, 2077. I convinced the men that we should bury the scientists. I don't know why. Perhaps it was to ease my conscience. I finally started to believe their stories when the last one was dying. My god, what have I become? October 27th, 2077. We're leaving this godforsaken place today. I'm leading the exodus to the old government bunker at Lost Hills. I'm leaving this log behind to be buried when this place goes in the next exchange. Who knows? Maybe someone will find it someday. And then he made the Brotherhood. Positions at the purifier. That's some serious firepower they're packing. What do you think? Vault Tech Administration System Records Database 923-A. Network offline. Please check your local connection. DC Area Vault Listings. Oh, because this used to be the Pentagon, they have a listing of all the local vaults. Vault 76. Equipment Issuances. Vault number 76. Starting construction date, February 2065. Ending construction date, October 2069. Total number of occupants, 500. Duration, 300 months. Computer control system, brain power 4. Primary power supply, light life geothermal. Secondary power supply, general atomics nuclear power. Non-standard equipment, none. Personnel assignments. Vault 76 goal summary. Vault 76 will be openly advertised and accepting admissions starting on July 4th, 2076. America's Tricentennial. This vault will operate exactly according to the plan dictated in the marketing material produced by vault -Tec and precisely to resident expectations. As such, this vault will be advertised to house the best and most successful from across America. This vault will open automatically after a period of 25 years, and the residents will be forced out into the post-apocalyptic Appalachia for study and comparison to the other experiments. 
the overseer of this vault will be given a special mission to redact it. To secure vault tech interests in Appalachia at a much later date. Project goals. Access restricted. Damn. Wait, this is the Pentagon. Why is access restricted from the Pentagon? Wait, I remember getting a message from Vault 76. Vault 76 log, 5-16-2242. Oh wow, we had no idea this old thing even worked. It's been shut down for decades. Hello from the Appalachians, or what's left of it? Oh, I guess their mission must not have been successful. It's probably for the best. Vault 87. Equipment issuances. Vault number 87, starting construction date, May 26. Ending construction date, December 2071. Total number of occupants, redacted. Total duration, redacted. Computer control system, Cyberbrain V2.3. Primary power supply, General Atomics Nuclear Power. Secondary power supply, Versicorp's Fusion Power. Non-standard equipment, Stasis Chamber, 4. Plasma Containment Field, 3. GEC, 1. Food Processing Station, 6. Unexpected end of file. Data corruption detected. Oh, this vault had a geck! That must be where I can find it! Connection active. Display text. Uh, port 16, Vault 87 error. 404. Server terminated. And for some reason, this one had some restricted entries too, although not quite as important. Personnel assignments. Error, files corrupted. Please reinstall operating system software. No. Error, file corruption detected. Please reinstall operating system software. Project goals. Access restricted. Huh, okay, so this one's restricted too. The goals of these vaults restricted from the Pentagon. Does that mean the government didn't know what Vault Tech was doing? Vault 92. Equipment issuances. Vault number 92. Starting construction date, May 2062. Ending construction date, May 2068. Total number of occupants, 245. Total duration, 100 years. Computer control system, brain power 7. Primary power supply, general atomics nuclear power. Secondary power supply, none. Non-standard equipment, sound equipment. Itemized in memo 328746-2A. Musical instruments, itemized in memo 9267-563-4C. Recording equipment, itemized in memo 5619-7J. Project goals, access restricted. Okay, so it seems like the Pentagon had information on the vaults, but it seems like they restricted information on the experiments themselves. Vault 101. Equipment issuances. Error. Files corrupted. Please reinstall operating system software. No. Error. File corruption detected. Please reinstall operating system software. Personnel assignments. Error. A network connection could not be found. Project goals. Access restricted. Vault 106. Equipment issuances. Vault number 106. Starting construction date, March 2064. Ending construction date, December 2069. Total number of occupants, 95 subjects, 12 researchers. Total duration, 147 months. Computer control system, Think Machine 2800X. Primary power supply, rock solid brand geothermal. Secondary power supply, General Atomics nuclear power. Personnel assignments. Vault 106 personnel assignments. Overseer, Dr. Albert Laris. Additional personnel. Archivist note. This information has been redacted at the request of Dr. Albert Laris of the Psychological Research Department and Chief Overseer of the Vault 106 project. All inquiries into the goals and research methods of Vault 106 are to be directed through his office. Fuck, Vault Tech was so secretive. Project goals. Vault 108. Equipment issuances. Vault number 108, starting construction date, March 2061, ending construction date, December 2069, due to work stoppage. Total number of occupants, 475. Total duration, 38 years. Computer control system, none. Primary power supply, General Atomics Nuclear Power. Note, main supply designed to fail after 240 months. 
Secondary power supply, steam whistle mini geothermal. Note from admin, we are aware that the steam whistle is only sufficient to power this project partially. Please do not file any further reports on this issue. Non-standard equipment, defensive weaponry, triple normal issue. Note, do not stock with standard entertainment. Oh god, that's awful. I remember this the vault with all the Garys. They specifically made sure that a crisis would happen. Personnel assignments. Vault 108 personnel assignments. Overseer, Brody Jones. Chief of Staff, Zachary K. Jameson. Chief of Security, Jarek Maddox. Morale Officer, Nathan Aragon. Researcher note. All standard positions have been intentionally left unfilled and will be assigned by the Overseer according to the Vault 108 protocols. According to the pre-assignment medical tests, Mr. Jones has a genetic disposition for a rare terminal strain of cancer, which should ideally cause him to expire within 40 months of the project's inception. These two events should combine to allow a proper catalyst that allows this project to continue as planned. What the fuck? They didn't tell him that he was predisposed to the cancer. He just wanted a power vacuum. Project goals. Error. File corruption detected. Please reinstall operating system software. Vault 112. Equipment issuances. Vault number 112. Starting construction date, November 2068. Ending construction date, June 2074. Total number of occupants, 85. Total duration, indefinitely. Computer control system, Think Machine 3600R. Primary, primary power supply, Soar po Sure Power Geothermal. Secondary power supply, Extra Sure Power Geothermal. Non-standard equipment, 12147C robots, caretaker variation, 85 stasis pods, list of liquid nutrients detailed in memo 943-B2. Oh, this is Dr. Braun's vault. Personnel Assignments Vault 112 Personnel Assignments Overseer Dr. Stanislaus Braun Additional Personnel Researchers note Due to the nature of the project in Vault 112 and the highly automated systems designed to support it, the vault requires only a single administrator. Project Goals Access Restricted My name is Stanislaus Braun. I'm a vault Tech scientist. I created this simulation for vault Tech, but for myself as well. <sighs> that was so fucked up. vault -Tech Personnel Assignments Error. File corruption detected. Please reinstall operating system software. Order requisition forms. Error. File corruption detected. Please reinstall operating system software. <sighs> Those vault experiments were so awful. I can't believe the government didn't even know about them. Or at least all of Welcome. them. Hail. Welcome to the Pentagon Library, General. Report on UFO codenamed Palandine. Further investigations into the UFO codenamed Palandine have confirmed our suspicions. On the evening of May 3rd, 2062, an alien craft of unknown make and origin did indeed breach the airspace just north of Hackerston, Maryland, and crashed into a heavily wooded non-residential area. Unfortunately, attempts to retrieve the craft proved unsuccessful. It simply could not be located, either due to some kind of advanced invisibility shielding, or because the occupants managed to make repairs and vacate the crash site before our arrival. Despite our failure of recovery, the significance of this event cannot be denied. We are not alone. I knew it! The reason they couldn't find it was because the Chinese spies got to it first. Alien power cells. This must be a spaceship. And the government was covering up, and then China was trying to figure out what was going on. Project Brainstorm Report Brainstorm Military Slash Cultural Center 2076 Progress Report Our flagship project, the Induced Patriotism Initiative has met with resounding success. Our agents have successfully included covert and overt messages of extreme patriotism and loyalty into popular media, ranging from the big screen to the Sunday funnies. Increased military enrollment amongst target demographics serves to underline this success. Agent Webb has been particularly effective at influencing the music industry, and he has interesting proposals for the fields of organized sports, and even such notoriously difficult markets as comic books and toys. A success in these areas would ensure early educating, 
would ensure early education with our message, and thus ensure a more dedicated and devoted nation for us all. Oh my god, that is so disgusting. What the fuck? Mission Cloacina Report Codename Cloacina, Development Report Development of the mutant undermining life form continues apace, and our chief bioengineers are certain that they will be able to perfect these living weapons in time for deployment into Red China. Once covertly released into an enemy's environment, their aggressive qualities, dangerous hunger, and pervasive breeding should severely undermine the infrastructure of the location in short order, softening the target for ground invasion. At this point, the genetic kill switch can be activated, allowing for easy reclamation, not including a significant one-time cleanup effort. Current MUL development primarily uses genetic stock of rodents, particularly the common sewer rat, and progress has been significant. FEV testing has been rejected, however, as the results are sterile. What? They were making bioweapons for a planned invasion of China? Fuck you, America. And run by you. Hi. Hail. Name's Greg. Greg Bear. Most of the guys just call me Kodiak. Heard about that mess over at the Purifier. Don't you worry. You're safe here. Oh, thanks. How did you end up in the Brotherhood? Now that's a story. The only reason I'm here is because of Elder Lions. You see, I grew up in the pit. Don't suppose you ever been there, huh? It's about 500 clicks to the northwest. Place is a nightmare. Three irradiated rivers coming together. People there were not well. But the Brotherhood of Steel came down on the place with a righteous hammer. They called it the Scourge. Uh, no, I've never been there. What was the Scourge? It was a Brotherhood operation. They marched in and swept the place clean. Most of the people there were half mutated, cancerous, vile things. And these people, rape gangs, torture squads, it was pure chaos there. The Scourge is the best thing that could have happened to it. This was way back, before the Citadel was fortified. Part of the early recon after the Brotherhood first arrived in this area. One night, a squad of brothers led by Paladin Lions swept into the city from over Mount Wash, tearing apart anyone who stood against them. They were completely outnumbered. And still, they raised that place to the ground. Really? What made them so terrible? The rivers. Even after the war, they were still flowing, but irradiated and filled with God knows what else. I saw things there I can't even begin to describe. I was only, what, eight years old when I left? Hell of a thing for a kid to go through. Well, it couldn't have just been radiation, otherwise we'd been... We'd have a similar problem here. How did you escape? As they swept through, the Brotherhood policed up every non-muty child they could find. Turns out there weren't that many. Me and maybe 20 others. The younger we were, the less of a chance that we were mutated. It was ugly work, no doubt, but it had to be done. I'll never forget the sight of the Brotherhood of Steel breaching the breast of the mountain at dawn. So, this seems to be a twofold story about how Lyons was actually way more humanitarian than a lot of Brotherhood in bringing you back here and letting you join. But I can also see why, if that mutation really was that awful, it might lead to discrimination against any and all mutations. So, he brought you back here. How, how did you end up here? Elder Lyons brought us all back to the Citadel. He said it was the safest place he knew of. This place was still being converted. He put us in as initiates and kept a watchful eye over us. He was tough, but he taught us to stay alive. The man's like a father to me. Huh, that's pretty amazing. Nah, the amazing thing is Elder Lyons. He risked everything. Went in, outmanned, and outgunned. I'll never be able to thank him enough. So I do my best to serve the Brotherhood. I know that that's what he really wants. In time, I'm sure you'll understand. So what's your combat specialization in Lion's Pride? Hell, I do it all. 
recon, demolition, tactical assault. Guess you could say I'm the pride's jack of all trades. Okay, uh, what's with that Gallows guy? Gallows? He's not a bad guy, truth be told. He just doesn't talk much. And if it ain't soldiering, that boy has no time for it. Tell you what, though, he's the meanest son of a bitch around here. All business. The rest of us, we get our R&R &R in. Not Gallows. There's even a betting pool on who can find out his real name. Talk to Glade about it. He'll tell you. Yeah, I heard. So, any thoughts on the Enclave? There's meat under that armor, and meat can be ground. That's disturbing. Care to share anything about the super mutants? Hell, I've killed more of those yellow Frankensteins than any other member of the Pride. Except maybe Gallows, those crazy solo night ops of his. Is there anything else you can tell me about the Lion's Pride? I see the Brotherhood's one thing, but the Pride, best of the best. Every damn one of us. Handpicked by Sentinel Lions herself. All right, thanks for talking with me. Bye. Strength and steel, friend. Roger that. Hello. Glad to see you and that egghead Lee made it here in one piece. I heard what happened to that purifier. Hell of a thing. Yeah, so what's your job in the Lion's Pride? Me? Heavy weapons, mini guns, missile launchers. If it's bigger than a human and goes boom, I'm all over it. So what can you tell me about the Lion's Pride? You, my friend, are talking about the most elite fighting force ever assembled within the Brotherhood of Steel. Each of us was handpicked by Sentinel Lions herself. You can't even realize what an honor that is. Sarah defines combat excellence. Uh-huh. Uh, could I talk about Gallows? You figure out his name yet? <laughs> yeah, I had thought not. Nope. So, any thoughts on the Enclave? Man, I don't know. Fighting uglies is one thing, but we've never gone up against anyone that well-trained or organized. Even their tech is better. Don't get me wrong, the pride's in it to win it. And I'll go down shooting if I have to. I just hope I don't have to. I understand that. Care to share anything about the super mutants? Man, nothing dies like an ugly. I once saw Colvin snipe the leg off one at 200 yards. Thing pirouetted like a figure skater. I don't appreciate the ease with which you dehumanize them. Anyway, bye. Of course. Oh, hey, Sarah. You just managed to get yourself into all sorts of trouble, don't you? Welcome to the Citadel. Not many civilians get to see the place. So what can you tell me about the Lion's Pride? It's the best of the Brotherhood, bar none. No one gets in without my say-so. So any thoughts on the Enclave? I've read the report, seen the initial scans, but I can hardly believe it. I figured those radio transmissions were just old recordings. Never figured the Enclave would actually show up in the flesh. But don't worry. Whatever they try, we'll be ready for it. I'll lead the Pride to knock them out tomorrow. If... My father permits it. <sighs> I... You aren't the only one to make that mistake with the Enclave. <sighs> anyway, care to share anything about the Super Mutants? You've seen them, so you know what we know. What more is there to say? If we can figure out where they're coming from, we might be able to stop them. If not... Yeah, sounds like you know basically nothing about them. So, hey... You know, the Lion's Doctrine won't work if the Brotherhood has a public image problem. And? I mean, you have to admit they've got those radio broadcasts all over the place. They're beating you on the propaganda market. I'm not arguing, believe me! So, I have a f magazine. You could do a photo shoot. You're the most recognizable Brotherhood soldier in the entire wasteland. You should take that armor off and show what the Brotherhood has that the Enclave doesn't. Show your humanity, you know? Fine. If you're going to do it, then do it.
but hurry up! Actually, you'll need to come to the studio. And you'll need to be nude. It's a porn magazine, that's just how it works. But I can promise you there will be lots of eyeballs on it. So that's how it is? So much for chivalry. I spoke with Elder Lyons about it. He agreed and assigned you. Always count on my father to send the best. You just better hope it doesn't come back to bite you. Give it a chance. You might enjoy yourself. My studio is in Canterbury Commons. We'll get a group and I'll go take pictures. We're burning daylight here. Are you ready to move out? Speak. So, what's your real name? What's the pool up to now, anyway? Nice try, though. Can't we work something out? Maybe share the winnings? No, we can't. Alright, well, if you really don't want anyone to know, I'm not gonna make you tell me. Who are, soldier? Stay safe, once again. Have you seen that enclave power? Oh, hi! What aid can I offer you, outsider? I actually have a few questions about the Citadel. What do you need to find? Can you tell me the layout? You are currently in A-Ring. Here you will find the Great Hall, the Lion's Den, and the Archives. Beyond this area is B-Ring, quarters for the Knights, Scribes, and Elder Lions. Outside in the Bailey are the training areas and access to the Initiates Barracks. Other than that, down those steps is the Lab. Be careful around there, the scribes are touchy about who goes near their toys. Do you have a medic? You could say that. We have an old robo-doc. He's a bit creepy, but he does the job. You'll find him in B-Ring. Uh, I need some supplies. Who would I see about that? Word came down that you got permission from Elder Lyons to trade. So just head down to the lab and talk to Knight Captain Durga. Oh, right. Okay. That's all I needed. Very well. You must see a lot of things. What's been going on? What's been going on? Well, let's see. For years, we've been draining our resources defending the ungrateful residents of this no-man's land. Most of my best friends have either been ripped apart by super mutants or left to join the outcasts. And now an enemy we faced more than 30 years ago has resurfaced, and their tech is still better than ours. What's been going on with you? Oh, can you tell me about the outcasts? I really don't want to go into it. Go bug scribe Bowditch. He could talk a dog off a meat truck. All right, well, what about the Enclave, then? As if we didn't have enough to worry about. Their weapons are better. Their power armor is better. Is their training better? We'll see. Well, what about the super mutants? You know how many uglies I've killed? More than all of Lion's pride combined. That's how many. All it takes is a loaded weapon and the will to use it. Oh, and a good way to get ugly blood out of your armor. Little bit of a Braxo and some water. Works like a charm. You know what? I have a feeling here from everyone saying that they've killed the most and calling them ugly that most of the Brotherhood is empty bravado. Anyway, bye. Of course. Need something, friend? 